Google is policing the content posted to YouTube, and they're using a thoroughly discredited left-wing group to do that. Google is creating a group of trusted flaggers who will help the company monitor alleged extremist content on the website. One of those trusted flaggers is not trusted at all. It's the Southern Poverty Law Center. It's not an expert on the South or poverty or the law. John Stossel recently explained the truth about this group in an amazing report. Here's part of it. The Southern Poverty Law Center, based in that building in Alabama, calls itself the premier group monitoring hate groups. Looking at their map of such groups, you'd think America was consumed by hate. I once believed in the center's mission. Well-meaning people still do. Apple just gave them a million dollars. But what donors don't know is that today the center smears people who don't deserve to be smeared. The Southern Poverty Law Center now lists people like Ben Carson, Laura Ingram, and Jeannie Pirro as extremists. But it doesn't list Antifa, the hate group that beats up people on the right. The center's become a hate group itself. It's now a left-wing, money-grabbing slander machine. It's a hate group. It is a hate group, too. Let's just be honest about that. Eric Schiffer is a tech entrepreneur, and he joins us tonight. Um, so, Eric, you follow this stuff closely. How did the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is wholly discredited and wholly political, wind up policing content on the most powerful company in the world? How'd that happen? You know, it's hard to understand. I think what was going on, Tucker, is that uh, these, you know, YouTube, in essence, was trying to uh, be inclusive in their mind and really trying to have an optical uh, perspective that they were being uh, and doing everything they could because they were taking a lot of heat from people saying they weren't doing enough to stop ISIS and extremist groups. Right. So that's what led to this. But it's just too far. I mean, you know, I, I can't imagine how they can have this group. And really, in my opinion, uh, more should be done and uh, a lot more. So, I mean, for people watching at home who think that you know, Southern Poverty Law Center sounds like a legitimate group, give us an example of the people or movements or websites they have deemed out, you know, beyond the pale, haters, extremists. Who have they called that? Well, I mean, Laura Ingram, uh, Ben Carson. I mean, you know, so you've got uh, conservative uh, figures that yes. they are labeling. Uh, and uh, I think it's gone too far. It really, in my opinion, uh, that YouTube should fire uh, Southern Poverty immediately from all YouTube monitoring because uh, it's an outrage. I mean, to have the possibility of an anti-conservative hitting delete for partisan reasons or on any content that's relevant to uh, patriotic Americans. And I think Google really needs to be, and YouTube, be transparent. I mean, uh, moving forward to monitor content and have a no right. policy uh, related to anyone that has any political affiliation or any reputation uh, for being part, uh, partisan. And I think also there really needs to be an apology uh, to patriotic Americans that use YouTube for this gross oversight and unfair uh, process is, that's really done uh, not with any kind of disclosure in the choice of using Southern poverty for right. the monitoring of content. It just it just doesn't make sense. And frankly, it opens up a bunch of things. I mean, when they're doing yeah, this to conservatives, what else are they doing it to? Well, that's a great question. We don't know because, of course, it's totally opaque. And by the way, whatever happened to saying what you think is true, even if people don't like it? But I guess that's passe. Eric, thank you. It's great to see you tonight. Thank you, Tucker. My pleasure. A lot of people now make a living off of YouTube. It's the world's most popular video site by far. It's a subsidiary of Google. Increasingly, though, Google seems to be letting politics dictate who is allowed to make money from their platform. Dave Rubin hosts a very popular show called The Rubin Report. It's online. YouTube hosts it. Recently, though, a whole bunch of Rubin's videos were demonetized. That's the word YouTube uses when they tell you you can't make money from them anymore. Why did that happen? Dave Rubin joins us tonight. Dave, it's good to see you. So explain what exactly happened. This has happened to other people. It sounds ominous. What does it mean and why they decide to do this? Yeah, well, I think most importantly, you know, the reason I agreed to do this with you tonight, Tucker, is that I am on that platform, the YouTube platform, and I want that platform to work. I want it right. to be all right. the things for all of the creators who put their content out there across the board politically or whether you're doing beauty videos or sports videos or politics videos or anything else. I want it to be treated fairly for everybody and be transparent in what it is. 
so, you know, the word demon is in demonetized, and I can tell you as someone that's dealing with some of this stuff, uh, that it, it appears at least that there's some pretty shady stuff going on. Uh, you know, look, I don't want to fight Google and YouTube. You know, there's a biblical story of David versus Goliath. I, I don't want to be Dave versus Google because it probably won't work out as well for me, but my show, uh, we do a talk show based on big ideas, sort of in an old school Larry King-esque uh, style. And I talk to people all over the political map. Many of them are conservative friends of yours. And then I have progressives and lefties. And we do, I talk about religion and science and all of this stuff. And our videos, our back catalog, just, just lately, I was off the grid, which is where this beard came, came from for a month. Uh, but just lately, our videos, almost our entire back catalog has been demonetized. And I'm talking about videos where we're talking about God and morality, or we're talking about basic stuff about the election, or even today, the video that I posted, one video today, it was with a YouTuber by the name of Phil DeFranco, who's one of the original YouTubers. The guy's got about 6 million subscribers, a really, really interesting, uh, interesting guy that I'm sure many of your audience knows. They demonetized that. This is with one of their top creators who's been on there forever. So look, I don't know so, exactly what's going on behind the well, scenes, we got a but statement. I know that we got a, a lot statement. of creators are upset. Well, I, I think that's right. And we got a statement from YouTube, um, and it contradicts what you just said. They said, over 90% of the videos on the Rubin Report are fully monetized. The remaining 10% are not because they contain discussions of adult topics, uh, pornography, ISIS. These are topics which many advertisers find objectionable. What's your response? Okay, I, look, I, you know, I said I don't want to do a David versus Goliath thing here, but I mean, that's just simply right. not true. I'm telling you right now, as we went to air, I have an iPhone here, it's a very fancy thing. The video that I posted this morning with Phil DeFranco, I can tell you about videos that I did with many people who are mainstream people who appear even on Fox, like Ben Shapiro and Larry Elder, Ayan Hirsi Ali, right. who I think is the greatest human rights hero that we have on earth today. Yes, I, I could talk about Bishop, Bishop Robert Barron from the Archdiocese in LA where we talked about religion. People I agree with people I disagree with. By the way, I don't think I'm necessarily Wait, being and, and, and those out here. videos have been demonetized? A, this is across the board problem. Yes, absolutely. The and we have screenshots, so I don't know. Yeah, and I'm not, Tucker, I'm not, I'm not BSing you here. I mean, I'm not, I even asked no, my guy right before you. we started, can we make, can we, yeah, can we make sure? So I don't know why they issued that strange statement. I'm glad that there is some communication though, because unfortunately they, the lack of transparency there, it took me about two years to get on the phone with them. I finally did about two weeks ago and didn't really get any answers. It's scary. Apparently Jason Whitlock got demonetized too from Fox Sports, who's a frequent guest uh, and a friend of this show. Yeah, We're going to get to the bottom of it. Dave. Dave, good luck. I mean, we're certainly rooting for you, and I hope you'll come back when you get to the bottom of what's going on. Somebody needs to keep track of what Google's doing, and we hope to do that on this show. So thanks a lot. Thanks. Now he says he's fed up with the modern left's autocratic tendencies and cannot endorse them anymore. Dave Rubin joins us from Los Angeles. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. I, I wanted to have you on after I saw this yeah. amazing uh, video that you did that did go viral explaining why you're at least shifting. I don't know if you're abandoning all your former beliefs, but you're reorienting for sure. Could you just basically sum up what happened? Why you changed your mind? Yeah, well, you know, first off, actually, I believe the same liberal principles that I've believed probably since around 1988 when Michael Dukakis was running against George H.W. Bush. And I was in a, a social studies class where we were having a mock election and I thought liberal was good. I mean, the, the issue that, that everybody's talking about, and by the way, I'm glad that I'm doing this tonight and, and with you because you're one of the few people in the mainstream that are, that are now talking about this. Uh, it's been bubbling up online for quite some time. And the, the progressive movement is no longer progressive. What progressive would be would be truly liberal, meaning for the individual, not for the collective, for liberty. I, right. I would welcome all your viewers to, to Google what classical liberalism is. It's about the individual and your right to, to do with your life what you would like. Uh, this is not what the modern left is about. So I actually believe the same exact things that I've believed probably for the last 30 some odd years. Uh, and it, it's the left that has gone crazy. And you know, I know you know this, but of course on all this free speech stuff, and, and judging yes. everybody on their immutable characteristics. So if you're black, we judge you this way. And if you leave the group think you, you're a traitor, if you're Muslim, if you're trans, gay, et cetera, et cetera, th these are reverse of liberal beliefs. And uh, it's been very sad to see this. I, I've been trying to fight this on my show for, for a good two years now. And I, I suspect we've lost that war and that I've lost the left, but I, I see an incredible new center developing where people that are liberal 
are now lining up and going, wait a minute, I, I see a libertarian who can come to the same right. agreement that I have. We can believe the same things, just looking at it through a different political lens. So there's a beautiful moment happening here, but of course it's lost in, in a big mess of, of free speech craziness and authoritarian nonsense. Right, and, and, and part of the agreement that might bring people who disagree with each other together is that we're not going to use the legal system against each other if we can help it. So you had this line in here that struck out, stuck out at me. You said, I am gay and married. I do not believe that a baker or a florist or any business person ought to be forced to bake a cake for a gay wedding because if the government can force a company to do something for one set of ideals, they can do it for any. So you see this as a threat to you, potentially. Well, of course. I mean, look, you know, I should lay out, you know, I'm on Fox News and I know people will freak out. Oh, my God, a liberal's on Fox News. Should I, I should give you some liberal cred. Look, I'm for gay marriage. I even married a guy. I'm, I'm right. for legalizing marijuana. I'm pro-choice. I'm for reforming the prison system. And the list goes on and on. As for that specific line, I personally wouldn't want the government telling a private business what to do. Now, a lot of people will say, well, wait yeah. a minute, that, sound, that sounds libertarian. You just want small government libertarianism. Again, this is actually a liberal principle, and I think this is something that most people actually believe. And I know there's a lot of good people that would argue with me and say, well, what if you live in a small town and, and you know you have a, a bigot is your baker in that one town? Unfortunately, right. I think this is a case where you have to use your foot vote. You have to then take your skills and your family and the money that you bring to the community and move somewhere else or order a cake online. And I know that that doesn't feel right to a lot of people, but that no, that I... in and of itself, this, this one person's bigotry shouldn't uh, be an excuse for more government overreach. And again, that is a That's liberal right. principle, believe it or not. Yeah. It is, to, to the extent possible, you know, and there are cases where you have to, but try not to bother other people too much. <laughs> that's, that's one way to put well, it. Well, that's, that, yeah. that's the funny yeah. thing, that uh, live and let live is a liberal principle. And what I've yes, now I found know. over the last couple of years, especially, is that defending my liberal principles has become a conservative position. So I find I it easy suddenly to build bridges with, with people that you know, like uh, Glenn Beck and Dennis Prager and Ben Shapiro, that are looking to go, wait a minute, maybe we can find some common ground with liberals. And I try to find, I often invite a lot of leftists on my show or progressives, and I get blocked or muted or you know otherwise uh, rejected. But I have had some too, and I, and I welcome those conversations. Tell me about it. I, I know the feeling. Yeah, I, I, would, think, I, would I think we're probably in the same boat on that. We, we are on that. To, to look up your video online, it's, it's absolutely worth seeing. Thanks a lot, Dave. I appreciate it.